My name is Leila, currently 39 years old. I work as a researcher for a pharmaceutical company. My husband Ted is the same age as mine. We were college classmates and got married at the age of 27. We have no children. Our relationship was strained by the fact that we did not have children for a long time. For a while, after we got married, we were comfortable with each other as an extension of our relationship. However, when I got 29, which was our second year after marriage, things started to get a little weird. It started with a Christmas card from my in laws. Have you had children yet? It was written in my mother in law's handwriting. She meant it's a gift, so she'll be happy if we have a child someday, right? I told my husband. Well, I'd like to have one soon, he replied. Well, if you want to have a child, that's what we should do. But my husband started to repeat that he wanted to have a child because of what my parents in law said. Then my parents in law started asking if we wanted to have a child. Not only in the form of Christmas cards, but also in our faces every time we met. And that's not all. They make me sign up for a gym five times a week to build a body that will help me conceive. No caffeine, all food should be organic. Everything in our house was thrown in the trash by them. Moreover, they sent us many child bearing figurines that were made by Native Americans in Sedona, and baobab tree objects, and all sorts of things every month. To top it all off, they brought a pregnant woman to my house out of the blue and told me to be blessed by her. It was the beginning of the act of superstition for good luck, and that we are in trouble. Then, in our fourth year of our marriage, by the time I turned 31, both my husband and parents in law began to get impatient, and their superstitious act became even more heated. And they, they started calling me on the phone saying, Hey, Layla, you go to the gym every day, don't you? I responded to my in laws. In a reasonable manner and try to cover it up. But in reality, although I tried, it was impossible for me to go to the gym every day. It interfered with my work, so I stopped going. And every year, angry words on their Christmas cards saying that they want to see their grandchildren. And also keep sending me good luck objects for conceiving a child. Saying they couldn't wait anymore. Because of this, my husband even said, Is your womb possessed by the devil or something? Possessed by the devil? How come? It's too much nonsense. Don't be silly. I'm having my period every month. I said to him, But if that's the case, then menstruation is just a waste of time. I can't help but think it's the work of the devil possessed to your womb, consuming pain every month. My husband was very serious. At this point, I had no choice but to start fertility treatment. I heard that if infertility treatment reveals either the husband or wife is the cause of the problem, Many couples forego infertility treatment because it can't cause marital discord. But in our case, even before we started treatment, we have been having problems because of my parents in law. So, infertility treatment was started to resolve that. Well, the results came back, and it wasn't something that could be solved by good luck. It was my sterile husband. But I'm not going to consider divorcing him because of it. I just thought it would stop all the acting out and accusations. But when my husband saw the test results, but 
There are things in this world that science can't explain. The Nazca lines, you know. Infertility is always caused by the wife. He said like it should be the fact. Huh? So, I knew it was almost all your fault. Huh? What? Excuse me? I was speechless with surprise. If that's the case with my husband, I don't need to tell you that my in those who believed in the superstitious thing ignored the test results and didn't batch on their theory. If the test results were to come back true, I don't think there would be any ancient lore. My mother in law said the same thing my husband did. Furthermore, my father in law followed. It's an ancient belief that childlessness is caused by the wife. Some say because she wants a sparier seed, the egg chooses the seed it accepts. So we're talking about the host of the womb. Leila, listen to your womb. And that's the end of the story. What's the point of the test? What the hell is the voice of the womb? It's just a once a month tummy ache. You've spent a lot of money on fertility treatment, ready to go through with it. But it didn't help our strained marriage at all. According to my husband's formula, my responsibility won. I don't believe the superstition. My responsibility number two, I have period every month. My responsibility number three, I like passion for wanting children. Husband's responsibility number one, only the result of the fertility test. Therefore, it seems that I am the cause of the infertility versus him. It is just too unfair. Wait a minute. The passion to have a child? No way. I do want it too. The fact that I went through fertility treatment proves that I want it. In the period, the thing that I'm responsible for? How is that my fault? I yelled at my husband. I'm just saying that if a woman doesn't want to get pregnant, it won't happen. Don't you get it? He said like I was saying something wrong. And science can be turned upside down if you have the desire to wish for it. Mr. Gordon next door, he was told he had three years to live, but he's still alive for more than four years. You work for a pharmaceutical company, but you don't even know that. He started to say such a thing to me. This really pissed me off. I'm doing research for a pharmaceutical company to cure people's headache. The current drugs have a high risk of damaging the gastrointestinal tract. I'm trying to improve it. But when such noble research is neglected, I felt like my pride in my work, and by extension, my humanity, was being denied. In the meantime, he nagged me. There's no point in living with a woman who has no desire to have children. I guess this is some kind of karma that is prevent me from having children and so on. And my parents-in-law also said to me, if you have the bad luck of not being able to have children, we should not allow you to marry our son. This is beyond the level of good luck or bad luck. Because my in-laws are like that, my husband's feelings started to drift away again. And it was a negative spiral. Before I knew it, my husband was coming home late and the number of days he was away from home on weekends also increased. Then one day, my husband said, I want to talk to you. I knew you were the cause of our infertility. While I thought what's the point now, I also had a vague idea of what was to come. The way my husband looked at me had changed and then he began to talk about what I had expected. 
since you didn't have the desire to have a baby, my feelings for you had gone already. And as the reaction to that, I hooked up with a girl who came into the office as a temp. Her feelings for me were stronger than yours. And guess what? She got pregnant. So, I'll take a girl with strong feelings for me. I'll be with her and answer to her feelings. Wow, is that so cool? I could only reply that way because I didn't listen to him seriously. Pregnant because of a strong feeling? How is that possible? I was like, well, congratulations, maybe? I don't know. But having a child with a woman you cheated on your wife with is absolutely wrong in the eyes of the world. I'm going to get my alimony, so be prepared for it, I told him. In response, my husband said, You are evil. I could smell infertility in the air. If you had been as devoted as she was to me, I don't think it would have ended like this. I hope you will carry that evil possessed in your womb and get the hell out of my life. He spit it on and then, I'll move into my loveness with her. So, at best you can stay here in this house and be alone. And he left the house. Be alone? Sure, I'll enjoy being alone. What a joy. I no longer had any feelings for my husband because it's been proven that the husband is the cause of infertility. I don't want him to blame me for my lack of passion or for being possessed by something. I can't stand the thought of being accused of the cause of infertility. I felt a sense of relief that my life of being falsely accused and looked down upon every day was over. And all I felt was relief. Hey, I have another woman now and will have a baby. I listened beside my husband as he gleefully called his in-laws. He was so confident that he was on speaker mode. Well, congratulations! I knew there was a difference between passion and a desire for a child. You should think you are free from bad luck. My mother-in-law was also in frenzy, blaming me alone for her misfortune of not having grandchildren. Within a few days, my husband was gone in high spirits to his new lover. The next day, I mailed the result of my husband's fertility test to his in-law's house as a final gift. Now, a few years later, I was having a cup of tea in my shiny room after cleaning up on Saturday morning. I put some nice chocolate on the table. I was enjoying the most refreshing time of my life. And then the phone rang. I don't socialize much. So it's rare for my phone to ring on such a lazy afternoon. Who is it? I looked at the screen and so it was my ex-mother-in-law. What is it? I answered the phone anyway. Please help me. I heard a shrill voice. I don't know what's going on. I was silent and my ex-mother-in-law continued as if she had lost her mind. That baby is definitely not my son's because she has darker skin and looks different from us. I pulled out my tea with a whoosh. Of course, she isn't. I was trying to tell them that the baby was definitely not my ex-husband's. So I sent my in-laws a copy of the test result. But it's funny how obvious the results showed its truth. There's nothing I can do to help. We're already divorced. I told her so coldly. Don't be so cold. It's fate that you became our daughter-in-law, isn't it? 
What kind of fate? I could have ignored her, but I wanted to see firsthand how confused my mother in law was. I decided to visit them the next day. I also had some things to say to them. When I visit the house, I found my ex parents in law, my ex husband, and his new wife. She wouldn't even look me in the eye. That's because when I divorced him, I took alimony from her too. They called her Scarlet, so I kind of knew her name. Well, maybe she's one of the cute ones. As soon as I arrived, my ex mother in law said, She gave birth to a baby, and it's a stranger's baby. She puffed up her nose and screamed. We did everything we could do to help you have a healthy baby. My ex mother in law is furious. I didn't ask you to do anything. You just did everything on your own. She's no sludge either. Stop it. Just stop. Both of you. It's obvious that the baby is not my son's. And my ex father in law intervened. It's funny that I'm here. I'm not involved in this at all. By the way, why am I being called here? It's also obvious that the baby is definitely not mine. I laughed at them. I called you because it's money related and you are the source of the cause of everything. My ex mother in law made a loud accusation against me. That's right. It's because you ripped off the alimony. She, too, turned her anger on me and she turned her face to her husband. This man lied to me when we started dating, saying he was paid twice as much as he made in a month. I would never have married him if he paid so little. She said out loud. Me, too. I wouldn't want to raise a child that is not mine. All you care about is money, money only. And my ex husband was furious. And the only reason this happened is because you, Leila, you took all the alimony. He threw his nonsense at me again. I laugh at his words instead. If the cause of your disagreement is my alimony, what is the cause of your having to pay the alimony? Everyone except me is stiffening up, shrinking back as if they've been hit where it hurts. You were so blinded by young women that you overstated your income. And you were so blinded by money that you begged for the child you had with another man. Whatever you say, it's all started with you. Didn't you? Everyone fell silent. My words broke the silence. So, whose child is it, after all? For you, money is no longer an option, right? Why don't you just tell us? I urged her, and she said, Someone I met at a bar. I only met him once. She muttered in a small voice. So you get pregnant from a one night stand. However, it's not cheating if you don't know who he is. Layla had the bad luck to crush any chess, but this new wife has the bad luck to bring any kinds of luck. She's also a trash. You were the one who wanted the kid and took the liberty of having one. The ex-mother-in-law and the new wife started a war of attrition. So I decided to destroy them all at once. You guys were trying to bring good luck, weren't you? And you, Ted? You said if you have enough passion, you can do anything what science can't, right? I say with a laugh. Then, pray for this baby to have lighter hair and lighter skin like you. And you have to do is have faith, isn't it right? Or rather, this child is nothing but a beautiful thing to me. 
How can you all behave in such a horrible way in front of this baby who has just came into this world? Just then, my phone rang. It was him, just like we planned. Yeah, okay, you can come in now. What? Who's there? My ex husband and Nino's all looked at me suspiciously. Eventually, I heard footsteps approaching and the doorbell rang. I opened the door and saw the tall man standing there. Leila, I'm here to pick you up. Thank you, honey. Are you okay? I'm sorry, I was out of the house for surgery yesterday. I introduced the man to all. This is my new husband, Ryan. Hello, everyone. What the? Yes, I had free married. He's a doctor that I met at work. He's tall and well paid. He's a lady first, a very kind man. Well, there's nothing the guys there can't beat. So, goodbye, everyone. You told me to live alone, but as you can see, I'm not lonely anymore. I say sarcastically, and Ryan besides me said, I'll protect Layla, no matter what. Then my ex husband, who didn't understand the situation, Huh? No, how come? He says something incomprehensible. He must have really lost his mind in the confusion of the situation. How's that possible? Leda told me. My husband interjected. It's okay to ask for good luck, if it's just to increase the possibilities a little. But it's not good to use good luck to bring others down. You can't use good luck to be happy to make others unhappy. And don't say it's the person's fault based on that. Then my ex husband, whose mouth had remained open until then, he brought up his own theory again without an evidence. Well, then, why is it that Mr. Gordon next door is living longer than his declared life expectancy? I thought Mr. Gordon had nothing to do with it. It's a standard practice. To give a short life expectancy so that the patient can spend the rest of his life with no regrets. Doctors would never say that they would surely die within that period of time, Ryan said and continued. I will never let you people near Layla again. All you bring her is unhappiness. And left the house with me. After that, my ex husband continued to email me for a while. He was running out of money and wanted me to help him with the alimony, even if it was just a little. According to the story, his new wife, Scarlett, eventually left the house without the child. I guess she gave up on her money challenged ex husband and drifted off somewhere far away. The ex husband is now living with his in laws, with the child Scarlett left behind. He would deserve it. There's no way I'm going to help him. I just hope the baby grows up safely and happily. Layla, I went to the jewelry store today. My husband handed me a beautifully wrapped box. When I opened it, I found a necklace that I had wanted for a long time. To be honest, it was a little too cute for me, but more than anything, it made me happy to see my husband's thoughtfulness. Thank you, honey. I'm so happy. But is today our anniversary or something? No, I'm just happy to spend every day with you. This is my gratitude to you. Oh, honey, thank you. I am so lucky to have you. I would be happy with him for the rest of my life. I thought quietly to myself and smiled back at them.